Before we jump into hazard ratios, let's first learn about something known as survival analysis. This is defined as a branch of statistics that studies the expected duration of time until an event occurs. This is also known as a time to event analysis. In a clinical trial, that event can be a heart attack, cancer remission, or even death. So in other words, in survival analysis, we want to know how long it took before a participant in the study had a heart attack, remission, or died. If we plot this on a graph, we get something that looks like this. Assume this is a clinical trial comparing two groups, one that received the treatment drug in the red and the other that received the control in the blue. And we are analyzing the time to death. The y-axis represents the percentage of patients alive and the x-axis is the time. As you can see, as the time passed, participants experienced the events of interest, death, causing the lines to continue to fall. This graph is also known as a Kaplan-Meier curve. We simply use hazard ratios to measure the outcomes or results of survival analysis, or the chances of the events occurring in the treatment arm also known as experimental event rate, versus the chance of the event occurring in the control arm, also known as control event rate. The event rate is simply the number of participants experiencing the event out of the total group of participants. Now for the interpretation of hazard ratios. So if it's one, that means the event rates are the same in both arms at any given time period. If it's less than one, it means that the event rates are lower in the treatment arm at any given time period. If it's greater than one, it means the event rates are higher in the treatment arm at any given time period. Now, let's look at an example to, to help you understand this even better. So let's say we have a randomized control trial and we had 105 people in the treatment group and 106 in the control group. The purpose of this trial was to assess the overall survival in heart failure patients. So the hazard ratio for death in the treatment group was 0.38. So this means that patients in the new treatment group at any time during the study period were 62% less likely to die than patients in the control group. 